Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Alhamdulillah, we have an exciting new session. Inshallah, now we'll take some time to go into a Q&A. So I'd like to invite our um, other speakers, Sheikh Abdurrahman Khan and Dr. Asif Hirani. Um, so uh, we did go a little bit uh, ahead of time, uh, sorry, behind time, um, because of uh, some delay in the schedule. So we have about uh, 15, 20 minutes, inshallah, for Q&A. Um, and I would humbly request from our speakers to uh, please uh, briefly uh, limit uh, the, uh, the answers for, your, for the Q&A session. Uh, and as well as to the viewers, I would like to um, advise that uh, now you can ask any question on the live YouTube channel as well as the live stream on Facebook. Um, and uh, inshallah, we'll go ahead and get started with uh, some of these questions. Um, we have one question for Sheikh Abdurrahman. Uh, you mentioned in your point number seven, um, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, told us to remember death, Ya ayyul ladhina amanu taqullaha wal tamdu nafsu ma qaddamat li ghad. The question is, um, the, the, the next ayah, wa la takunu kal ladhina nasullaha fa ansahum anfusahum. Uh, what does it mean to forget yourself? Uh, can you please uh, clarify on this? Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. To forget yourself is to live in this life that you forget where you come from, to forget where you're going. And so you have lost your direction and you could, not, you could care less about having the direction, the right direction. So when you start forgetting yourself, you start forgetting who you are, you start forgetting your soul. And that's why perhaps the acronym, which uh, some of our brothers uh, and sisters like, <laughs> see status, this is the saddest state in which you can be really in, to forget who you are. And so you forget who you are, and so Ansahum and Fusahum is to Allah cause you to forget. Uh, your own self. Okay. You forget Allah, you forget who, you know, forget Allah, so He calls you to forget who you are. And you live and die for Allah. Um, we have, uh, I'm just going to go down through the list of the questions that we have, and if we have any questions on the live stream, uh, please, uh, brothers and sisters, now is the time. Or we can ask uh, our shayu, um, and you can designate the question to anyone. Um, uh, there is a question for uh, the, Dr. Asif. Uh, in fact, this is a fifty question, so this is open to everyone. Um, and I think we've heard this before, but uh, for the benefit of our, of our viewers now, um, the question is: Can we play an audio recording of the Quran uh, while we pray Tarawih at home? I would pass this question to Sheikh Abdurrahman and Sheikh Shinawi because Sheikh Abdurrahman is, I guess, senior than both of us. Uh, so, Sheikhi, please. No, you cannot. You can listen to the Quran. Uh, yes, we are in virtual reality. But when it comes to Allah, when it comes to His Kalam, it's not virtual reality. We can listen to the Quran through an audio, through video, which we do all the time. You know, some of us before. You go to bed, you want to hear what the Imam and Haram read, even though there is no crowd there. You still want to know what they read or somebody else reciting Quran. But when it comes to prayer, it is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to do it directly. Even if all you know is Surah Al-Ikhlas, read it how many times you want. Surah Fatiha, Surah Ikhlas, Surah Fatiha, Surah Ikhlas. Um, can uh, I just add something very fast? Sure, of course. Okay, J just from my from from a legal perspective, the reason why the the scholars left and right are all saying this uh, is because the point of a congregational prayer is that you congregate and you get together, uh, and that is why many of the uh, you know, for example, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke about the uh, the invalidity of a prayer of someone who is who has broken off from the ranks, broken off from the saf, meaning deliberately, so not being in the same space altogether. Uh, also plays into that. It, it's a uh, a number of factors that converge on the impossibility of, of a prayer being valid if you're following an imam virtually. Uh, and I know there's a whole long discussion about then why do sisters pray from another room to the end of it? And sometimes the, the dynamic of the masjid forces that. I'm not approving, but the masjid that were built later on 
uh, or the, many of the new masajid nowadays, alhamdulillah, are accounting for this factor, uh, that there should be direct uh, continuation of the rows um, whenever feasibly, logistically possible. The last thing is regarding people asking this question. The driving force behind this question is you feel wrong to be repeating the same few surahs you know sometimes over and over and over again. But I want you to realize that it's not about getting through how many pages. I want you to realize that Abu Bakr Siddiq repeated an ayah 20 times in Surah Al-Naba, Surah Amma Sa'adun, which many of you know. I want to tell you the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was reported about him that he recited one verse for an entire night, reflecting on it and praying to Allah and repeating it and weeping and over and over and over again. So don't feel wrong. This is actually what we're supposed to be doing. Perhaps you may discover something from a verse that you've recited a thousand times. Uh, something you've never ever come across before. May Allah allow us and you to tap into the, the treasures of the Quran. So alhamdulillah, good news for those of us who only know Surah Al-Ikhlas and the small surahs. <laughs> um, uh, inshallah, we have a, uh, another question for um, uh, Dr. Asif. Uh, in, your, in your session, you mentioned that uh, there, there is a practical way to study and reflect Quran. The question is, is it more important to recite the whole Quran in Ramadan or if to if one can only read the translation for a surah like Al-Baqarah or Ali Arman? So uh, if it, it can be done simultaneously, then it's better um, because uh, reading the Arabic text uh, is the original word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have its own have its own beauty have its own benefits you will get the reward you will get the inspiration but at the same time we as a non-arab who doesn't understand arabic as a, as a native language uh, then um it's it's you won't get the guidance you won't get the intellectual emotional lesson which you need which you need to get with and that's the reason why quran was revealed to change the dynamics of the people uh, means you can still be racist you can still do all those bad things if you are un reciting the Quran in a foreign language. So it won't hit your heart and mind. So uh, it have to be done both simultaneously. Uh, there are no two extremes to stay on the moderate path. Um, but if you would ask me in terms of priority, just if finishing the Quran is never for an obligation in Ramadan. Uh, so whatever is easy for you, whatever is easy for you, if you can pick and choose whatever portion are relevant for you, um, if you're youth, maybe some po different portions are relevant. If you're a family-oriented person, some different portion of the Quran will be, will be relevant. Uh, so just pick and choose those portions, inshallah. And hopefully, inshallah, we all can get benefit from the Quran, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Um, we only have a few minutes left, so I'll try to uh, hurry this up um, uh, uh, because we have the next session coming up very soon. A uh, question for Sheikh uh, Muhammad Shinawi. Uh, one of the viewers who is a, uh, a new Muslim to Islam, she um, she, she recently accepted Islam. She's asking, uh, Mashallah, we're very impressed with your education. Can you please um, tell us those online Islamic sources for increasing our knowledge? Oh, no. Shameless plugs on their way. Yeah. Um, so if I don't start with ILF, Sheikh Asif will, will tear me down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, ILF, I am just not fully aware of the, uh, I guess, the systematic nature of their instruction. Maybe he can uh, chime in on that. But I personally have studied and continue to uh, have a relationship with Mishkeh mm -hmm. University. Uh, M-I-S-H-K-A-H-U for university dot com. Mishkeh U dot com. Um, and there's so many subhanAllah online resources now between Islamic Seminary of America and uh, I think Qalam also has a virtual uh, um, platform now where it works from. So uh, I just share what I know. And forgive me for being biased. Zakallah khair, Sheikh Muhammad. Absolutely no problem in there. Um, alhamdulillah, mashallah, we have so many, so many sources uh, for for studying Islam and. Uh, you can also check ILF from Chicago. Yeah, ILFChicago.org. <laughs> um, and uh, Sheikh Muhammad. The Ikna, and, uh, Ikna arm yeah. of education, and they also have some very good learning online, so you can join yes. them as well. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless all these efforts. Um, uh, we have one question for Sheikh Abdurrahman. And uh, sorry to emphasize this again, we'll try to keep the answers brief. Um, you mentioned uh, point number eight, keeping good company. Uh, there's a question here. Someone who is in quarantine with his roommates, uh, I'm thinking from school or university, roommates are using foul language and watching bad things on TV. They are Muslims, but how can I get them to come help me get closer to Allah? Yes. Uh, first of all, you uh, show your uprightness 
uh, whichever environment you're in. And Allah talks about that in Surah Yusuf. He was in prison and because of his upright character, the, the other prisoners, along with the uh, prison warders, they know <coughs> his uprightness. And because of that, uh, he was able, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to reach uh, as what we might call finance minister, uh, issuing the grains. And so uh, you have to maintain, yes, yeah, sometimes you may not be able to, to change your circumstances around you for where you are, but you can change yourself to those surroundings so that you are able to become upright, to act upright. And if you hear foul language, it takes, it takes not one day and one week, and I don't know how long this quarantine is going for, but definitely if you show your uprightness, you pray your salah, there are many roommates who use those foul language who drink, who smoke, but they have good Muslim roommates. And we have heard stories that they also uh, saw the good akhlaq, the good character and mannerism of those people, and they, they become Muslims themselves. So it's, it's, a, it's a work in process. And, and you know, you have, to, you have to keep doing it. You have to keep your, your iman going and your dawah. Jazakallah khair to all of our shayukh. Uh, we do have some more questions and I apologize we weren't able to get to those. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our shayukh, to bless their families. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, bless this uh, this effort that we have and to bless all of us in this uh, in this quarantine. I would also like to make an appeal, uh, brothers and sisters, um, uh, you know, you, you've heard this throughout the day. Uh, please go to icna.org slash donate. There's going to be some more information about the work that Ikna is doing. And as our, as our teachers mentioned, that this is a time where we can serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And while we're locked up in quarantine, it might, feel, it might seem like there's not much we can do to serve Allah. We can sit and we can talk with Allah. We can pray tahajjud, we can read Quran, we can make dua, we can fast. But we might still seem like there's not much we're doing for the world. At that point, it's an opportunity for us to take whatever resources Allah has given us and to share that with others. Uh, and that's the, the, one of the works that ICNA is doing uh, across education, across relief, across charity, across da'wah, that we are spreading the message of Islam. So icna.org slash donate. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.